Let's go. Let's go into loans. Let's think about loans now. So, twenty threes football, and sometimes eighteens in terms of the older older band of that that kind of age group. What does how does loans help? Is it been supportive? What does it look like for you? I think loans could be better. Yeah, I think it could be more organised uh, around what the players' needs are. Yeah. Um, how we play and how our first team plays mm. in respect to how we might send our players out. Mm. But loans have changed over, over the years as well. Um, I mean, when if you had a player, in the, if you had a young player in the Premier League, he'd be going out to a league, league one, league two yeah. club playing. You know, now it seems like you get your players out, they're going to conference, conference south. Yes. So the levels that they're going in at uh, is, is, a lot, is a lot lower. Yeah. Um, so... That's well, what, that what, do you, what do you think? What do you think the reason is for that? Is that just personal, personal relationships between clubs, or I'm not sure. I'm not managers sure. of I'm, academies. I, I, I'm, because now there are so many players in the game. Yeah. From 18s to 23s, the numbers have grown so much. Sure. I don't know if the quality of the player within the system is yeah. as good as what the player, as good as the players in the system. Before. before, yeah, yeah. It is. It was so, so, you know, there's a lot less players in the system before, maybe of a higher quality, than, than there is now. And that's with, the sta- that we, with the same demands, I with, guess, in with, terms of from clubs. Yeah, with the same demands. So maybe that's maybe that's a reason why. Yeah. And that's why we have to manage our players into, into certain levels. And I look at it like this. Providing the levels of... Uh, it's not a bad level, I think, getting out players to Conference South, um, Ryman Prem, Conference Prem... Teams isn't a bad thing. They're playing against men. They're having to deal with, they're having to deal with uh, a lack of organisation in training at times. Maybe managers don't have the amount of time that resources that, and resources that that, that coaches have day to day at top elite clubs. Um, so they have to learn to deal with that. They're getting thrown into games. They've maybe not done as much work as they would have liked. Um, they're, they're playing against men who uh, you know are coming in from work and going to train and. And that might be, unfortunately, the environment they've got to find themselves in if they don't get to the level that... And that 150, 500 quid that they're getting, you know what I mean, 300 quid that they're getting in, in that, that sort of level is important to them. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's so important to those people. I think it's good to expose the players to that just so they can see it sometimes. Yeah. Because then when they come back in, they might think, you know, I've really got to push myself now. Yeah, okay. To stay... It's to, to stay. And, how, and, how, and how is it... How do you dictate what is... You talked about the players' needs and... Mm knowing what's right in terms of their needs. How, how is that dictated? How do you, is it just based on your knowledge, your experience in regards to what came into you, maybe when you was at Leighton Orient in the first team? How, how do you dictate from Carla, you know what, that's what Carla needs. Carla needs a, a conference, Carla needs a Ryman, Carla needs a League One. Cause how do you- Sometimes it depends on, on the player. So yeah. we look at the player and we could say, is this player physically ready to go out on loan? But if he is, if he isn't, sorry, mm-hmm. we need to send him to a team that maybe don't demand the physicality or the physical side of the game where they want him to play a certain way. Mm-hmm. And we need to we need to make sure we find find that sort of club for him. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter what he plays against; he's always going to play against diff- different. different physicalities. Yeah, yeah. So he's got to learn to deal with that. Um, if a player, sometimes if a player thinks he should be playing the first team, you maybe need to send him out and expose him to. To playing in a conference yeah. and League One and seeing him or League Two and see him make mistakes that's been very costly. Yeah. But to bring him back in and say, these are the mistakes you're making at, at this level. At this level, it will be more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so there, there, there's a learning in that as well and a development in that to, to to show players that they're not quite ready because I could. There's times when you know if I look back over my career, I could say at, at 18, 19, I thought you know what I should be having, I should be playing here, yeah? I should be having a go here. Yeah? And we had Dennis Burkamp, Ian Wright. Um, p- people like that in the team yeah. at the time yeah. and I'm thinking hold on so I'm sure he was the fastest player at Arsenal at that stage I was quick yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um, f- uh, speedboat with no driver um, no, but, um, so so there's different tool, different different um, educational uh, needs for, for the players when they go out on loan that's, that's the point I'm trying yeah. to make okay alright interesting oh, would it be uh, uh, fair to say that even though the boys are going in I know you said when boys left went on loan mm. they're going to the uh, League 1 League 2 mm. now they're going into conference so is it a fair argument to say that the conference teams are now better than they were then and they've got more full time clubs at that level 
Yeah, you could say that. You could say that maybe football has improved in general and the standard's gone up. Um, so that's why they're going into those levels. So you, there's, yeah, that, that could be that. That could definitely be the case as well. So that's why it shouldn't be frowned upon when the players are going out to conference. Do you, do you think the stuff. expectations of the players as well? In, and they're they're probably they might be comparing in regards to things even more recent years. Going well, hang on a minute. Five years ago, players were going to championship or League One, and now mm. a loan's like. Alone is a conference. Nah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna wait for a League One. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait for a. Yeah, no, um, that, that, that that happens. You know, players. You know, that, I think they need to know that wherever we're sending them, we're sending it. We're sending them there for them, for their development. Mm. Sometimes, you know, we, we it can get to the point where the players call in the shot, and it shouldn't shouldn't be that way. We're not sending them there because we want them out the door. We're sending them there because we, we want to help them develop. Mm. Even if a player goes into a conference south team and plays five games yeah. and comes back in, I can guarantee you he would have gained vast experience from those five games. Yeah. So it's important that we, yeah, we open our minds when it comes to, to loans. I guess that's part of the education for them when they start to go into the 18s stroke 23s environment that and I'm sure there's loads of voices in, in 18s and 23s they've probably got their agent or their representation mm. or they've got their parents they've got you know I mean they might even have a girlfriend that you know I mean anyone that is probably trying to you know I mean a part whatever they've got mm. in terms of trying to get them to understand what they need to do so it must be quite difficult there must be so many voices. factors so many voices in their ears yeah. um, in regards to what to do there mm. um, and also when they go into the environment how do they cope can they cope with that environment have they I suppose that's part of the, the development that's the whole point of them going it's, that, it's, yeah. it's coping it's coping like what you said yeah that's the point that's um, the point of them being exposed to it you know then we probably have the other end of the spectrum in terms of you have players in the environment that are doing relatively okay, they're still on the development path, then you probably have difficult decisions about exiting, releasing players at that stage. What's that process like for you personally? Mm. Um, do you think, not you personally, the system itself can do more? Or what's, what's your take on that? Um, I'm, well, if I'm honest, I'm a very caring person. You know, I really care a lot yeah. about all the players I've worked with. Yeah. But not just here at, at, at Watford. Um, I've, I'd like to say I've kept in contact with most players I've worked with, mm. um, if not as a player, um, as a coach. Mm. Um, it's really important to me. Um, coming back to the loans again, that's another reason why we have to start, we send players out on loan if we feel that it's time that we have to start prepping and creating a profile for the player mm. um, to, to, to move on with his career. It's important we get him out and we expose him so that other people can see him as well. Mm. You know, we've had, we had a case last year where we knew maybe um, their, their path was coming to an end at the club and we needed to expose him to going out on loan. And if that meant 10 teams would see him and him, him have in interest from 10 clubs, albeit at a lower level, mm. um, we've at least tried to, to support, the yeah, to support that and, and, and support that transition mm. and it's very important because um, it's hard for players you know and um, do we do enough I think you know I think we I think we've done we're doing a lot more mm. than what than what used to be done um, and I think probably a lot more can be done but it's do we have the resources and do we have the manpower uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you if you had a magic wand so to speak and it might not be the foot. It might not be the football club. Uh, I mean, uh, my thoughts is that it could be a number of different combinations. That could it be? Could it be the FA? Could it be the? Uh, could it be anyone? Could it be? I mean, could it be a, a different body? Could it be just like a, a body that is created solely to deal with exits? Um, and what that looks like, I, I don't know. I'm just saying, is in terms of because it's it's a growing. I suppose it's a growing concern in regards to the environment that. As you said, there's loads more players now, and probably because of these extra tiers of football in terms of 23s, and you could probably have rather than just having 18s going into the first team. Now you can have, you can give them more time, but what it means is more time means more players. So you got now an extra 20, let's say 15 to 20 young boys who can develop, and they're given the time. But actually, realistically, out of these 15, 
probably five to six are going to stay on mm. um, in real terms. Some environments might do more, some environments might even do less. Um, but knowing that and knowing that that's gonna, it's going to come to an end and they're going to find it difficult to come in definitely at the same level, but maybe even at a lower level, what happens for these, these young people? I mean, I, I, um, I think the first thing, the first place has got to start is at home. Yeah. With the parents. Um, I think it's really important that we don't, we don't pin all our hopes on our, on our children becoming players. Um, I know it's hard, it's hard to say and hard to think about, but I think if we, if we prep the players before they get to that point, mm. I think it's a lot easier and like to have other interests and to, and to continue with the education. And I mean, I hear it all the time, like, oh, God, they're here to be footballers, you know, like when people are, talking about education, them coming and doing extra hours. And I don't agree with it. I think it's really important that they do their education. I think mm. it's really important that they have other other Hobbies, aspects in, yeah. their, in their life. Yeah. Because um, it's when you don't and when you get to that final point and you've got nothing else, that's when it becomes a real struggle. But we are, I think things have got a lot better. Like we do exit trials and we do we do all these things for players. Now, there never used to be exit mm. trials. There never used to be like... It's, maybe 10 years ago mm. now there's exit trials now there's ways of boys now there's going abroad and having scholarships abroad and now mm. there's so there, are, there there is other varieties of ways that mm. we're trying to help the boys to continue but I, I don't think there's ever a soft landing if I'm honest yeah. Kind of, yeah. there's you want it so much yeah there's never a soft landing but it's about what you've got around you what, what environment you've what, got around you to help you what, what I think was stayed with me and it's similar to what you're saying I remember being in a conference when I used to work in the footballing environment and I, I I went to a conference and they said it's important to have multiple legs and that's always stayed with me and I know through my time working um, in the football club it's it's always been a conscious effort to make sure or to at least stare in some sort of way to say, listen, have multiple legs to yourself. Do you know what I mean? It's not just the football leg, it's the whatever leg. It's the, do you know what? I go and do golf and I go and do golf and I take that quite serious. It might even be a sport. It might be like, I don't know, business or investment or whatever. Or just trying to do something that when you when that leg comes away, or if it does mm. come away from you, you still stand in, so to speak. Yeah. Um, I think that's quite quite important. I think what's important is you've got to be able to tell somebody in a way without telling them to forget. Because sometimes it can be misconstrued, and people can you can if you tell somebody something, it's like, well, why are you telling me this? You tell me it's because I'm not good enough, mm. or are you? T they don't want to hear that. Mm. They want to hear that they're going to go on to become footballers. It's about making them aware in a way that opens their mind to um, to think in a different way. Mm. But like I can't come back to the same thing is that it's nev there's never a soft landing. I don't think you can ever have a soft landing when it comes to something that you love. So even take away football, take whatever it is, if it's ballet, if, it, whatever, if it's sport, if it's whatever it might be, whatever your you family. pinned your hopes on, yeah. Um, and whatever you've worked so hard towards, when it doesn't happen, the landing's never soft, but it's about what's being created around you and who you've got around you to help you through that period. Um, that's what's important, I think. Interesting. All right, so, so you're, you're, you're 23 coach. Now, where's the success for you? Where, where, where is it? That, where do they, might be outsiders looking in onto to your work, your piece of work, or you yourself, where, in those two ways, where is the success for you? Success for me now, I mean, obviously you've got to be, I don't know if you've heard the term a million times before, but you've got to be a chameleon in whatever environment you're working <laughs> in. So um, if, I, if I was working in first team football, yeah. your success would be getting results yeah. and winning yeah. and bringing, bringing young players in who are worth peanuts and then they're worth millions of pounds. That's the sort of success in senior football. Yeah. In, in, in academy football, the success, if you're looking at football, has to be in developing the players, making them better, making them work in an environment that they're, they're happy and thriving in, progressing them to break into the first team, to go out on loan, to, get, to gain experience, um, to become worth, them what they, worth more than what they are when they come into the building. Um, these, are all like, these are all like factors of success within academy football. Mm. Um, creating, creating young men who are respectful uh, outside of the environment, mm. um, who understand when and how to behave in different environments. 
Um, personally, success for me is um, speaking to every player that I've spoke with, and, and they can call me and, and 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 call on me whenever they want, uh, for whatever reason, whether it be um, football, whether it be outside of football. Uh, that's really important to me. Uh, that's a success to me that I know that I've got players that will come and, and ask me, "Oh, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Mm. I've got this problem. I've got that problem. I'm not a counselor, mm. but." I like to think that with the experience that we've, that we've had and gained over the years, we can always help and act like a um, father or older brother mm. uh, figure. That's really important to me. That's success. Mm. Um, success from my own point of uh, view, again, in respect of academy is, um, yes, seeing boys playing the first team, seeing boys move on, um, who a lot of other people have opinions on that say are not going to get there, but go and, and achieve. Mm. That's really important to me. Um, there's, there's loads, loads of things. Mm. Um, it does. Does it become tough? Is there? I mean, I'm sure there's frustrations in any any world of work. You know, what I mean, there's frustrations. Do you feel like there's barriers to those successes, or sometimes things are made difficult? I think back to your journeys in regards to as a coach. I'm talking about, and I'm thinking about Leighton Orient fifteens all the way to the first team. That couldn't have been smooth. No matter what, how, on paper, it looks like great success. I mean, to go from a 15s coach to the first team manager is like, wow, unheard of. And probably in a similar fashion in regards to 15s coach at Watford to 23s coach at Watford. And it, and both in relatively short short spaces of time, if I'm thinking about it. And I'm thinking that couldn't have been smooth. No, um, it's been tough. It's been tough. Um been tough but it always seems to it always seem to get there like, mm. you know, working hard I suppose having people around you that that you respect mm. and that end up respecting you mm. I think um, I think that's the most important thing really you know be it working in environments where you let people know uh, what their what their worth is mm. that they don't just feel like no matter who they are what what position they hold um, we're, we're all working together and making each other feel like um, we're all playing a very big part in 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 a, in a big or a small part in a big picture, if you like. Um, that that's been really important to me, and and just in respect of the going up from 15s to first team, and and same here, 15s to 23s, and I don't really look here. I just work, just keep working, and I, I want to get to first team. I, I like being in first team environments. Mm. I, I know that. I know that. That's Someone you. asked me a question the other day. Uh, uh, quite a a big coach like with a big big career in coaching yeah he says like what do you want to do and I, i've always said like i don't think it's about what i want to do i, I think it's about where, where it takes me yeah. like everything i do always... do you think your characteristics although working in the, working through your it seems like older age groups i'm generally that sort of person i'm generally do you know what in and around youth teams to a first team environment be it First team, Leighton Orient or Twenty Threes, Watford. Is it something that that you think that that's your niche? Again, I've, we've had we've have we've had these conversations with many other people, and they've always felt like coaches, certain development coaches, feel like a coach is has a niche mm -hmm. to themselves. Where it be, you know, I'm a great nice to tennis coach. That's where I see myself. I'm good at developing players at that age, mm -hmm. um, whereas there has been a culture of the better coaches work with the older age groups mm. and that's where they're, that's where it does. If you're a good coach, you move up the age groups. Um, is that, are you, do you feel that you're, this is, I'm actually a developer of the older age groups, a professional phase or is it, I don't know, wh wh where do you see it? No, I don't think, I don't think, so. I, I like, I've liked coaching, like I've coached Little Ends, I've yeah. had my own, you know, my, you know so I've had my yeah. own like grassroots teams. Yeah. Um, I've coached every age group. I, I think it's about people. Yeah. I really do. I think it's about w what you've got in front of you, whether they're babies, whether they're uh, 23s, whether they're first team, is we are people at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. put, put the game aside. You have, to under you have to know the game. You've got to be a good, you've got to be a coach. You've got to be able to organise. You've got to be able to have good structure. You've got to have good organisation skills. You've got to be on time. All those factors up f for a coach is important. You've got to know your stuff. Mm. Um, 
obviously the the older age groups you go to, the more you need to know in respect of eleven v eleven and opposition analysis and tactics. So the more you, the higher you go, the age wise, the more you got to do. Mm. Um, but no, I really do think it's about like just working with people um, is what is important. I don't think I have a niche. I do like senior football and I, I like games. I love matches. Mm. So whether it be an under eight, whether it be an under 50, <laughs> whether it be a first team, whether it be 23, yeah. I love matches. I love being able to try to take apart what the opposition is doing. I love being able to solve problems and I love to win. Mm. Um, that's never come out of me since I was a player. Yeah. It's always been there. Yeah. Uh, so just about channeling it the right way at different ages. Yeah, you of know? course. And that's, what, that's what's important. Of course. Uh, Yeah, I think um, like we, we we're going through that now. At a minute at Watford, like we lost our last three three games, I think, and quite heavily, you know, four zip, four zip, three zip, and it's painful. You know, it's not nice. It's um, you know, you look at yourself, you look at your, your your team, you look at what you're doing, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, as a team, as players, and I, I see a, a lot of people are quick to to find excuses as to why, mm. you know, always if it's not the players. Mm. It's the system. If it's not the system, it's the it's, players. It's the players. <laughs> yeah. um, and it is frustrating. Um, and there is that element of pressure because I want to win. Like I, I won't ever, I won't ever um, like forget development for, of the players in the environment that I'm in over over the winning. But I, I've always said it is that the two go hand in hand because winning breeds winning breeds confidence. Winning breeds like good team spirit. Um, so it's important. It's a real important factor. Um, so yeah, it's not nice, but I know what position I'm in. I know where I'm at. I know what... It's easy to say winning and losing, but then you've got to look at why. What are the factors? We've had, you know, if I look at my own situation at the minute, we've had 17s playing in the 23s, which is great for them. It's great development. We've had 18s playing in the 23s. The great success is coming in different ways. Yeah, it comes in different ways. and Maybe not in the result. We've had trialists come in, which we've had to look at, you know? Uh, we've had we've had 23s going into the first team and being around the first team with four or five players out on loan. So there's loads of factors that people don't see other than the result. Mm. Obviously, where we're, we're within it and we can see where we can understand. It's, it's just important that you you can you can work that out in your head. And, and well, you uh, have to contextualize it, don't you? You have to you, you yeah. have to go. Well, this is what it is for what reason? Yeah, which is still hard because at the end of the day, you want you you want to win. Mm. You always want to win. Do you think, I, I was just listening to what you're saying in terms of the in hand in hand and you're talking about results coming in hand in hand with development. Is it because if you win, the players start believing in what you say as a coach or is it, because I'm just thinking, how? In what way does it go hand in hand? If you win, they go, oh, well, what are you saying? To do that, to do this, to press X button means Y button, Mm. I get no, yeah, a, I get a equals definitely an element of what you're working on day to day. If you're winning, yeah, there's buying, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when you're not, there's a reason. There's a reason to have an excuse. Yeah, yeah. players are players. We know are very selfish. Very self. You know, there's very few players out there that that play purely for the team. You know, yeah. with, with development, they're yeah. playing for themselves. Yeah, of so course. If you're playing a certain system, players will be quick to be ah, oh, I'm not good in that system. Uh, that's not really for me. Mm -hmm. So, in order to get buy-in, results will help with that. Mm -hmm. um, but they also, what they don't understand is they've got to be exposed to playing different ways mm. and and different. Uh, got to be adaptable. Diff yeah, different methods because you're not going to be playing the same way your whole career. Mm. And it's not even about playing in different systems. It's about once someone recognizes what you're good at, they're going to stop you from doing that. Mm. So you have to become adjustable within your own style and your own game. So these are the things we're trying to teach the boys at 23s. Um, and that sometimes can be a challenge, but that's, that's what we're there for. Mm. Now, but, how do you, just thinking about the young boys coming up, and possibly the first team, mm. how do you manage up and how do you manage down in terms of staff? So at times, the 18 staff, they'll have their own objectives that they want to reach. Mm. They may be saying to themselves, look, we want to be top of the league, for example. Five 
you know, that's done. Mm. And you lost five games in a row, three hits, four hit by him. How do you manage all of that? I think we, we, we've, we've had good communication uh, up, like with, with first team, and I think uh, there's been good communication um, below with the 18s. The 18s accept that if you're thin, and players go up that you have to take players mm. then sometimes you know it's, it's difficult for them which I understand because they can't really prep either so it's a spiral effect uh, if we can't prep they can't prep because we're taking their players sometimes there's college involved with, with 17s and 18s that on different days so now you have to manage schedules to make sure they, they align so that you can get the 18s to train with you um, there's good communication up like I said um, I think they're good in respect they take the players now I can I can you can say who who have we got who who could possibly be coming down so you can plan and prep best you can, um, but it is a difficult twenty three is a real difficult age group. You're you're stuck between uh, eighteens and tw- uh, and first team, and you have to try to manage it best best you can. I think it, it's okay. It's going okay, um, and it's it's just something that you have it's something that you have to accept. 